up where I left off, I'm going to review Infamous 2 with Slee. Now, let's say Infamous 2 takes place a year after the first game. Let's say a year. He still plays Cole McGrath, he's got all of his superpowers, he's like he's he's like honed in with them, he's like gotten used to them and he's like, like a he's a badass. He's still a badass. And him and Zeke are having a good life in Empire City, preparing for the beast. Cole thinks he's ready for the beast. And then lo and behold, the beast attacks Empire City and Cole's like, I'm gonna kick the fuck out of you, man. You're mine. You're your fucking candy ass is mine right now. So Cole runs up the dock and he's like blasting them with rockets. Like it's no tomorrow. Like it's just like it's as easy as blinking. And he's just blasting this fucker. So you that's right, bitch, I'm over here. You come over. And then the beast comes over and he's like a hundred feet tall. And Cole's like, like six foot. Cole's like, oh fuck. Dude, what the fuck? And then you're in the air and you're shooting this bastard in the face. You blow it away and Cole's like, yeah, bitch. Bring it! And then it just comes out of nowhere and blows everything up. Yep. It literally kick owns it owns Cole so bad that Cole like turns emo and just wants to kill himself. And then the game cuts to like say four months later and Cole and Zeke and this wife called Agent Quo who's ugly at first but then turns hot are on their way on a boat to New Marais, which is basically like New Orleans. Because that's the place where this guy called Dr. Wolf is, who knows about this thing called Blast Cores, which can help Cole gain new powers and become stronger and defeat the beast. And Cole's like, you yeah, know, whatever, dude, I'm just, let's do this. And then you meet Wolf, and he gets blown up, and then Cole's like, what the fuck? And then Cole's like, oh, but there's Blast Cores everywhere, you just gotta go find them. And Cole's like, oh, cool. Thanks. And then this conduit wife called um, Nick shows up and she's like all erotic to Cole and Cole's like, dude. And I'm like, no, man. And then you do missions for her and then there's like this redneck douchebag called Bertrand that's like trying to rope up all the conduits and kill them all because it's like, it's like, it's like black slavery, but this time it's superpower people instead of black people. That's, but that's basically what it is. I don't mean to sound horrible or nothing, but that's what it reminds me of. Um, and then the game progresses. The game progresses with Cole doing all these, these I would like to think, pointless missions. Collecting blast cores, getting new uh, powers. But the one thing that keeps it going for me, kept the story going for me, was... Every so often a message would come up on the screen saying the beast is 800 miles away and you're like, oh fuck, he's actually getting really, really close. And I still have like four blast cores to find Jesus. And there was a point at the game where it, he said that he was in New Marais and I had two blast cores to find. I thought to myself, have I fucked up by doing all the side missions and that? Have I actually really fucked this up? And he's gotten here before I've actually collected all these blast codes, but no, it's a part of the story, so it's cool. I was like, whoo, thank fuck. But um, with these blast codes, Cole gets these brilliant new powers called Ionic Powers. And there's only like four, and one is a gigantic tornado which decimates everything. Another is a... Now that I think about it, the tornado is... The tornado is the only one. There's actually only two ionic powers. One's a tornado and one's a big lightning storm. That's great. What you do get with your blast cores is new powers. Like you get better thrusters, you get to um, levitate things. That's fucking awesome. Uh, you're boosting on these fucking power lines. They go faster. Uh, you get to shoot. You eventually get to shoot rockets. Your grenades get better. You get to um. You get to swap powers with, you get you didn't get to swap powers, you get to join powers with another conduit, say ice or fire or whatever, you become electric and fire and you combine the two and you become a, like a, a, even more of a badass, let's say. And that's the best thing about this game is like from the get go you feel like a badass. You basically are a badass because practically every move that Cole had from the first game is, is, is unlocked from the get go in the second game. And that's brilliant. That's great. It's great for story. And uh, what I like about Cole himself in this game is that he's 
so much more light-hearted than in the first game. Cause in the first game, every two seconds, like, oh, I can't be bothered with this. I just want to, I just want to go home. I just want it to end. Oh, everyone's dying. And in this, he's like. He's joking, he jokes with everyone, he takes the piss. He literally takes the piss out of everything. And there's a moment in the game where him and Agent Core are talking about the penal code. And Cole, Cole, that's the best Cole moment ever. And I couldn't stop laughing, it was so funny. And another up, up, upgraded, let's say, element about this game compared to the first game is the side missions. In the first game, the side missions were like, oh, go to the hospital, kill these guys, and that's it. Oh, go to this place, kill the three dudes, collect the black shards, that's it. But in this, you have to intercept convoys, you have to um, go into the swamps and stop an infestation, you have to jump onto enemy boats and destroy them before they dump things into the town. There's, 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 there's delivery missions, obviously, there's um, photography missions, they're quite cool, they're better than the first game. The side missions overall are actually genuinely better. Uh, the moves in this game compared to the first game are, are amazingly better. In the first game you had the spark, but this you have blasts, it's great. Graphically this game's a million times better than the first game. Um, story wise is good, story is good, but I don't know. I just felt it was a bit drawn out, like it took too long to happen. I mean there was like, there was points where I was like, this mission doesn't need to happen. This mission does not need to happen. I'm not. I'm not making any difference by doing this mission. There's no, nothing in the story in this mission that's making any difference. What Infamous Two has the Infamous One didn't is lasting appeal, which is great. Trophies in this are like uh, there's more trophies in this. They're better um, varied in this game, and it has user generated content, which is great. Which is the only multiplayer basically in it. And it's where you go in and create levels, post them, and people play them for XP, and you rate them, and you can comment, I think, or whatever. But um, and the and the mission create the level creator itself is actually really deep. It's deeper than I would say. It's deeper than Little Big Planet, but not as effective as Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet, you can create anything. In this, you can only create a, a limited thing. You can only go so far with the created missions. And the missions that people have created are really great. The best one I've played is like, it's, it's a story where Cole is being telepathically con contacted by a, a, a conduit who's a little boy. And he doesn't understand what his power is. And he's talking to Cole. And for a user generated content, it actually made me feel emotional because there's a bit in that mission where you're just like, oh my god, holy shit, I did not see that coming. And you're like, you put the controller down and you just think, wow, and like, it was great, it was the best thing I've ever done. I'm trying to think, I think I've covered it all again. <laughs> so all in all, everything about the first game is here, but amplified tenfold to make it a brilliantly better game. The game is longer than the first game. But there's, but there's a lot of filler in the missions. There's, a, there's more filler missions than canon missions, I have to say. The side missions are vastly improved, the powers are vastly improved, the new powers are very original and very unique, and very effective in their own special ways. And the, the new added user generated content is very innovative and original. And there's a DLC coming out where um, vampires invade, and they're not your poofy Twilight vampires, they're proper cool vampires. And Cole gets infected by one, and that looks amazing. It's like Red Dead style. It's really good. And I think that wraps up the review. And I would have to say that Infamous 2. I'm going to give it an 8 plus out of 10. I was going to give it a 9, but now that I think about it, it would be 8 plus because there's a lot of filler and a lot of boring parts in the story missions. So I'm going to give this game an 8+, plus, which I think is impressive. So this, Infamous 2, is an impressive game and you should buy it because it's brilliant. And that's the end of another Ryan's Rambling Reviews. Triple R. You know? That's what I'm going to call this shit now. Triple R episode like 3 or something. So thanks for watching. Take care. Have fun. Have a nice day, enjoy your PS3, and bye!